So now I receive this question quite a lot where people say, yeah, when I, when I talk about these high check frequency boards that at first sight might look like a board that really favors our range because we have all the overpairs and will and doesn't. Can you explain to the people that are watching just, just briefly, if it's possible for you, why do we still want to check back on this board? Why, why, and especially with the stack size, why don't we want to see about our entire range here? So we have nut disadvantage on this board in the very high nuts. We don't have pocket threes, probably don't have pocket fives. Um, so in the sets, we have definitely nuts disadvantage and we have high two pair disadvantage. So we are not opening five three suited. We are not opening eight five suited, but he's defending all of the suited combinations, probably even because he is covering you pretty pretty well, uh, defending eight five, eight five off suit, probably. So in the two pair combos, we are crushed. In the sets, we are crushed. and. Every time when you are crushed in a very nut range, not 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 part of your range, then you need to check a decent amount of your range. Because the 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 player with the with the high range advantage just either can bet a lot or can check race the world. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our bounty review. Today we're going to continue what, where we stopped last time with the pocket five cents, uh, pocket five cent. And yeah, today we're going to keep focusing on um, bounty related stuff. Since it's still in the middle stage of the tournament, we are trying to, um, we are trying to focus more on post -lop. Um, and and how bounties impact our post slope situations here and there we're gonna have uh, for sure a couple short stack spots we will see we haven't reviewed the footage yet so it's gonna be completely fresh for us as well and yeah but then later on we definitely want to finish this tournament so we're definitely gonna have lots of ICM bounty stuff as well a uh, short stack uh, in the in the later parts maybe today as well we will see and depending on how much time we need and I don't think I need to introduce Nico anymore um, yeah. Hey. Yeah. So uh, let's jump right in. The first thing that is really important, by the way, which I see here, is that you always want to switch to the chips, right, Nico? So you don't really want to work with the big blinds. You always want to work with how much chips everyone has, right? Can you just shortly explain why is that the case? Well, for later on, you want to know how many starting stacks a player has. And if you show the number in big blinds, then of course you cannot see how many starting stacks this is effectively. So what I do in game is I usually switch when an all-in situation occurs in a bounty tournament to chips. Also when I play live online and uh, see the chips. <coughs> and when you know how much starting stacks a player has and how much bounties a player has, then you can very easily and fast say how much equity you will take off from the odds um, to to know yeah. how, how big the bounty influence is. Yeah. Exactly. That's very important, guys. So always keep in mind to switch to displaying the chips and not the big blind. So let's continue here. And as you can see, now we can see how much chips we have. So for example, here, this guy has 35 big blinds, right? But if you look at his chips it's only 21,000 and when you consider that the starting stack in the bounty builder 500 is 25,000 he has less than starting stack so actually the the value of the bounty now is becomes significantly significantly uh, worth more and more since he has less than starting stack but if you only have displayed the the big blinds you don't really see he could have also have like 50,000 right so you always want to see the total amount of chips that villain has so king nine off uh we face an open i think it's something where we don't want to get involved too so it should be pretty easy forward what would you do with king 10 off <coughs> i think a flat yeah i would also flat 10 for suited um ace for off here any adjustments you would make would you would that be an open race per, uh, per default for you since the blinds are covering you i think i'm folding 100 percent of the times yeah. and 
in a, in a regular tournament, I'm, fo I'm folding this hand yeah. all day long. So from a cutoff, this is not a good open race. I would also only open race if I have reached that the blinds are not defending their blinds accordingly. But I think here in the in the in the bounty where both blinds are covering you, I would even be more close, uh, more more even of a clear fold. Uh, would you be okay with opening something like Ace Eight often better, Ace Nine often better, and then any suited Ace? Yeah, I think Ace Nine, Ace Eight is alright. So I think you can open race down if you really want to. You can open race down to Ace Five off suit and fold two or three bet. Yeah, but. Yeah, I don't really like those rag aces, especially in a in a tougher tournament where people are three betting probably even more against yeah. uh, shorter stacks. So I just decrease the race fold gap a yeah, little yeah. bit. That's that's very important. So when you already want to learn something for um, making adjustments in bounty tournaments, is is that if you look at the range you would play in a freeze out, if you now see that. Um, you are playing against stacks that are covering you, it's very likely that they're going to defend more, they're going to 3-bet more, they're going to get it more, li more light against you. So the first adjustment you need to do is have less raise folds in your hand. So if, let's say your default raising range would be ace-5 off from the cutoff. Already taking out these ace-5 and ace-6 off combos and then let's say starting with ace-7 off is already a very good adjustment and you will be doing much better than your competitors because most people are not adjusting at all. They're still playing the same ranges. They think they have an edge for whatever fantasy reasons they might come up with to maintain the same ra ranges. So if you already make adjustment and decrease your race fold gap, this is already huge. How much you have to tighten up your, your range, this is then the next step you're going to make. But the biggest, um, the biggest impact on your win rate will already make come from the fact that you tighten up your race forward gap and in the those spots better be a little bit too tight so if you want to be in the safe side then even forward a7 a8 off and you're good to go i think too many people are over complicating um <clears throat> and and uh yeah and also overwhelming themselves and yeah i think king jack off here is uh is a very clear fold three doors off you're not going to play king 10 suited and i think that's very interesting here cutoff versus yeah, MP, 30 bigs. What do you think? Now, do, do the other two players are folding? I don't know. Ah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, you can either go for a three bet or you can go for a call. Um, since the player is covering you and he has a high incentive to just jam nearly his full opening range, um, I would go with a call here. Yeah, I also slightly prefer the call. I wouldn't mind a three bit if he, <coughs> if if we we also have to to take into consideration that when we call, that the blinds get a really good risk reward ratio and just squeezing a lot of hands and just committing themselves against our cutoff bounty here. Um, <coughs> so I definitely want to tighten up my entire V pip range here a bit. Um, usually I would also be V pipping king nine suited, calling or three betting. So I would less play king nine suited and, and sometimes mix in. I think king ten suited is a very nice combo as a three bet. We definitely want to have less three bet forwards than in a freeze out. So I would definitely be very careful and just select a few combos. But I think king ten suited and maybe a few ace nine, ace eight suited combos um, is, 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 is very, very good. Um, but other than that, still just flatting a bunch and... Uh, oh yeah, I, I think I would have thought I threw at this hand, but yeah. <clears throat> so villain C bets, I have I had no reads on him. He's he's he wasn't an unknown to me. But I expect a lot of C betting also with this crap on this board. So in hindsight, I wouldn't mind a float with two over cards, back to flush draw, back to straight draw, uh, or back to gut shots. Um, also, this board does not like, I, but Big Blind doesn't have nine four nine five off. Uh, maybe not not even nine four suited. Um, so he doesn't have that many two pair combos. So I don't mind the float here. I also I also don't mind folding here. Um, yeah, what do you think? I think fold is good. Yeah. Um, 
as I said, you probably don't know how wide the big blind is defending here, and he can have a lot of two pairs. Yeah. He probably doesn't, but he can. And also on this kind of structure, the uh, early position opener, if he if he's a bit small, like you said uh, in the last video, it's more or less a hand which doesn't need much protection. Yeah. And on this kind of structure where the big blind and you actually in your cut of flooding range have like a lot of good combinations on the, on on this kind of structure. I think he is most of the times rather strong. So your backdoor backdoor king ten suited doesn't look so good. So I think yeah. I'm folding here okay. most of the times. Yeah. So we're slowly <coughs> slowly binding down. Um, here is king off. Very important. I know people are gonna chase bounties, but don't make the mistake just to open shove. You want to induce light calls, light reshafts. Sometimes you have to play out of position. Um, in general, king high boards much better for our range because we have all the ace kings. We have all the aces and kings, which Villain doesn't have to a certain frequency, and we still have all the king queens, king jacks. Also, queens jacks are relatively strong. We have a few flush draws, so I think in general we should be c betting this board with a rather high frequency um, turn play. Do you see any difference in uh, Kados' response here in, t in terms of the flush draws compared to freeze out tournaments? How do you think people have played their flush draws here? Mm, as the so, 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 so you had like 20 favorite clients, right? Uh, I think I have that I, no, no, I have uh, yeah, yeah, 23. Something like this, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I think that people are just realizing the equity on the flop and race call. Yeah. Most of the times. Do, do, do so. you think it would be an overplay to just go three streets for value here with the ace no. king? Okay. No. No, in a in a in a regular tournament, yes. Um, in a tournament, where people are realizing the equity. Yeah. On the flop, for the for the bounty value, I don't think. Yeah. I, I think we have a clear call down here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think that check on the river is good. From his perspective. No, I no, think I, I think I, ch I check call the turn. Yeah, but uh, okay, yeah, I I think you should bet the turn. I, I think so too. I, do, I don't like it at all. I think I neglected the fact that he should be raising. Um, he has a few like king, queen, king, drag, king, tenant clubs combos, and that's pretty much it, right? Uh, if he Correct. has queen, jack clubs, if he has ace, queen, ace, jack clubs, I think he would be raising with a very high frequency. And uh, he, and he has all the king, x combos we're, we're ahead against, and uh, I think it's just a spot. And if, if he has this combo, I think he would be calling down pretty much always. I think this uh, is a perfect example of where I lost 12,000 in chips that I would have additionally gotten by going for bet, bet, bet. And I think I think I even, in hindsight, I would just prefer the check shove on the turn. Uh, if he has a hand like king, queen with one club, if he even has a hand like ace, jack or ace, queen with one club, he might be stacking off given the bounty in, that is in play. I think now our hand just with the bounty in play is so much stronger um, that I definitely would prefer just check shoving the turn or betting myself. I think I played this hand too passively and it's a clear mistake. All right, on to the next one. Uh, you like the fold with the force? Yeah. Even though we cover, but this guy, big blind has 100. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, you can adapt and open three X here. Yeah. And so, so you can play against small blind. Yeah. But on the other hand, if the small blind shoves the big blind, jams a decent amount of the time. Yeah, yeah. And you're sitting there with your force. Yeah. <laughs> Is queen off? Uh. So this guy opens, I mean, we can see what his bounty was at this point in time. Uh, so he has starting bounty. Um, but the stats I had on him is that he was is raising quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I just, usually I would be flatting very often, but I think with a bounty in play and him not adjusting accordingly and also probably calling off way too many king, queen, ace, jack combos, he's a recreational player. Like a... He 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 loves to gamble. 
Like he's a. Uh, if he has a good hand, he goes for it. Okay, but he doesn't cover you, so. But I don't I, know. I cover him. Yeah, I, I I understand why you want to go and with yeah. him, but on the other hand, no, but, I don't know. But, I can cannot see him calling king queen or something like this. I mean, it's, you, you it's, do it's know him? thirty bigs. You know? No, him? I don't. Okay. No, no, I don't. He, he's a very, very well known, um, recreational player on high stakes. Okay. So if he has king queen, he's like, well, this guy just wants to have my bounty. I'm gonna call him off. Like he he did already diff complete way looser calls than that. So. This is just a slight adjustment that I made here. That usually I would be calling ace queen, and I think just ace king, ace queen, just shoving it in here, giving him the opportunity to make a gambling gamble call, uh, okay. to double up, to cover all the other stacks, whatever his reasoning might be. Um, wait, are we going the right way? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Ace Queen off again, also op uh, sizing up a little bit against. Uh, usually, I would be opening a little bit more towards min raise or 2.2x, but here 2.5x. I, I even don't mind 3x against this big blind. Um, usually, I would be checking back this board because I uh, like with a decent frequency because um, just all my broadways that I'm opening are not really connecting. I can't just see but everything. And now he can just start with this stack size and bounty in play. In theory, he could be just check shoving 3-6 or 3-4 and just deny so much equity in my range. And even if he gets it in with a 5 outer against my over pairs, it's just, it's never going to be so bad for him. And if I start c-betting all my broadways and he can just, that allows him to just to check shove everything on me. Um, Against him, though, I think he is probably, like, he's definitely capable of doing it. I think it's it's very close. Like, how would you, how would you approach this, this spot in theory? Well, you check. Um, I mean, I mean, this would is... You, would you this, see this your range? Like a 50, no, this is like a the yeah. 45 to 50% range seabed here yeah. for the early position. And, of course, since you're betting... Not so much. You're sizing up, so you're betting like 65, 70 percent. Yeah. But here, if you're sea betting, and you're just checking back most of your ice X combinations here, and yeah. yeah. What value <laughs> not, hands? Not not much. Not much you can you can do. Your hand is just shit on this kind of structure. Yeah. What what kind of value hands would you be checking back with? Aces. Yeah. Kings. Kings with a very high frequency. I think you're betting kings sometimes, but you're, yeah. you're checking this back. Um, you're betting, of course, all your queens to nines. Um, I'm checking. I think I'm checking top set here. Yeah, I'm checking top set here. Um, and I'm betting, of course, all the like ace twos, ace fours, ace six suited, ace seven suited, etc. Jack ten, jack nine suited. Queen nine suited. So we have we have we have like enough bets on yeah. the on the flop which have enough backdoor equity and enough strong hands to protect them. And yeah, for, for all of your like broad ways or like your I don't know, like King ten suited hands, uh King Queen suited hands, just have to check them back. Yeah. So now I receive this question quite a lot where people say, Yeah, when I when I talk about these high check frequency boards that at first sight might look like a board that really favors our range because we have all the over pairs and will and doesn't. Can you explain to the people that are watching, just just briefly, if it's possible for you, why do we still want to check back on this board? Why why and especially with the stack size, why don't we want to see about our entire range here? So we have not disadvantage on the sport in the very high nuts we don't have pocket threes probably don't have pocket fives um so in the sets we have definitely nuts disadvantage and we have high two pair disadvantage so we are not opening five three suited we are not opening eight five suited but he's defending all of the suited combinations probably even because he is covering you pretty pretty well uh defending eight five eight five off suit probably so in the two pair combos we are crushed in the sets we are crushed and Every time when you are crushed in a very nut range, not 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 part of your range, then you need to check a decent amount of your range. Because the 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 player with the with the high range advantage just either can bet a lot or can check race the world. 
Yeah. What about our middling part? Let's say our non-paired hands. How 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 much do you think is it is the frequency or the the ratio between our paired hands and say over pairs or top pairs or second pairs and our non-paired hands? So ace high, king high. So you think it's 50 50, 60 40? Dude, God, just, considering just, your considering your your opening range, how how much pair plus you have on this kind of structure? Yeah, is the question. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, like. 16 17 percent pair plus pair plus and that's it 16 17 percent yeah it, you, you have an you have an early position so roughly 20 percent right uh, roughly roughly 20 okay so th that's right. which actually what i'm like what i would like to point at even though if it's 50 whatever so if 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 we let's say have a hand that ha only has a pair of like 20 percent of the time that means that 80 percent let's say we we assume we have to bet we want to bet our range that allows willen to just check shove everything on us because we are folding 80 percent of the time he has a three and he's denying so much equity of our range so this is simply a board let's say if the board would be jack 10 something or queen eight three or something that also gives us with our middling part our king queens queen jacks queen tens ace queen queen nine suited all these sort of hands and also our offsuited combo, so let's say ace or ace queen, let's say it's queen high board, king queen. Our, our offsuited 16 combinations of king queen are now paired. When the board is just eight high, we only have six combos of each pair that is a pair. So nines on this board is a pair, right? And over pair is very strong and we also go broke, but it's only six combos. So the more the board structure shifts towards a, a Broadway heavy um, board texture, it's always better for our range. And then there are multiple board textures where we can start seabedding our entire range because we have so many hands we can stack off with. We also have so many more high equity hands. Like on Jack 10, we have King Queen, Queen 9, Queen 8, even Ace Queen, Ace King that can stand the race and eventually even stack off because Villain has also weaker open enders and we have two overs and a gutter against his pairs. But here, we don't really have any, any uh, high equity hands. Like, 10-9, Jack-10, we, we basically only have backdoor draws. We don't have one single, maybe Ace-4 suited. That's it. So there's so little room to maneuver. And if you start seabedding your entire range, you come with way too many hands, way too much crap to the turn. And that's why the, the lower the stack to pot ratio, so let's say you're playing 20, 30 big blinds, and the lower the board texture, the higher your check back frequency. If it's 50, 60 big blinds, it becomes a little different because Willen cannot just start check shoving his 3, 4 suited or his 5, 7 suited because it's going to be way too expensive for him if he starts uh, running into uh, an over pair. However, we still want to having a higher check back frequency, um, but we're able to realize more equity against check raises. This is a different story, maybe a part of, uh, topic for another video when we can maybe talk about these board textures when we are deeper 50 60 70 big blinds and when we also start opening more of these pocket five and pocket threes type of hands then it becomes completely different but with 20 to 30 big blinds you don't want to be opening threes and fives from under the gun so that's why stack sizes are so important and you always have to think okay what is how does my nut range on this board interfere with the board texture my middling part, so my air range, like ace high and king highs, and how does villains? Yes, he has a lot of crap in his range, but still, it doesn't allow us to see but our entire range. All right, this was a little bit more in depth, but I think it's very important because a lot of people struggle on the spot. Uh, let's see how it continues. So, oh, I actually went for a bet, uh, which I don't like, and yeah, I even faced a small check raise. It's like th that's where the level war begins, and I think it's a great illustration where. Um, I don't follow my own reasoning because he can be aggressive, he can be gambling, and that's definitely not. And then I'm like, well, he can be very aggressive, he can check raise his 6-9, six, six, his jack-10, 10-9s, ten, ten so I probably have to call a small check raise. I mean, he's raising to, how much is it? I can't really see it. Can I also raise it, but it's like 4.7k, something like ah, this, 4.3k. 4.2. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm getting insane odds. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I opted to call once and then I hopefully fought the turn. Yeah, but uh, I kind of, I don't know, it's kind of stings his, his, his line here. Um, yeah, still, there's nothing I can do because in case he has something, I'm just, 
I'm risking my tournament life and giving up so much EV. Well, not actually a very good turn card to um, to call. Yeah, yeah, um, that's that's then the really problem. really really sucks on the turn yeah. calls if you if you like to see that and to call the race. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're we going the wrong way. King Jack off. We of course defend. Uh, nine seven three. I think similar for him, right? He should have some checkbacks on the sport texture. Um, definitely. High, I would say a higher C bit frequency than on the eight high board because he has more nine x that he's opening with that can stack off. Like Correct. Yeah. <coughs> Ace nines, king nines, queen nines, ten nines. Also a few more draws like ten eight suited, some jack tens. Um, where at least can peel a race. Um, I think this turn is very good for my range, and I should start betting a lot. Um, even even some king highs, and the way I perceive population to play is that they're not checking back so many aces and kings, so it's just a pure exploit that I'm making against most players, that they're not really like balancing their checkback range with over pairs. I think they're just too greedy for the bounty, checking back too many ace high, king highs, and I think with just one small bet and another like half pot, maybe then depending on the river, I think they're just too, like any 10, any eight, any six, any four, um, even if the board pairs, we have two overs. Um, I think uh, I definitely want to be leading a lot of my king jack, king 10, king eight combos here. And it's printing if I'm if I make him forward ace kings, ace queens, ace jacks with a very high frequency on later streets. Yeah, I think this is um even with balanced check back range on a flop. Yeah, I like a, a very, 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 very high lead frequency on the turn, yeah. which is six or lower. And uh yeah, the five of course is inside, so I think yeah. you are leading like the world here out of your BB range. Yeah, I think it might be even I I don't know, like I Recently, you had analyzed a similar spot and was basically leading your entire range. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's probably the lead range here. Yeah. And if it's not, it's like 90% yeah. range. Something so, like this. so you're, you're leading a lot. It's just, since his range is so ace high, king I have, you can start betting any pair. Um, yeah, I hope I follow through. And yeah, I think this is a, the clearest yeah. river bet in the world. I don't make it too big. Like, I can just, I can. I can literally, I mean, I have every six in my range. I have every two pair. Yeah, um, probably size up a little bit because you have so much value. I think uh, I size up a little bit and um, go for like 5.5, .5, but yeah. Yeah, we get a raise. Which is so, we have, so we have pocket sixes over there and we are yeah. folding. Uh, I mean, we're not even beating his bluffs. Like he could, no. he, he could even be raising <laughs> like some like a bottom pair or something. Uh, Jack nine suited. We're four. Do you do you consider appealing here with Jack nine suited? I think his. Um, no. Yeah. Good. No. Now, 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 now you are in the in the zone where the bounty play actually it's a little bit comparable to the final table play when you are in mid stack. You're waiting for a hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. You have just to chill and wait yeah. for a hand or a spot where you can add in 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 the big blind where you can defend and um try to double up. Yeah. Ace check suited, twelve big blinds, we go for it. <laughs> <This> game. <laughs> there was someone chasing my bounty here with Jack Five off. <laughs> Pretty standard call. Yeah. What do you think about his open race? I uh, love it. That's so good. Yeah, so it's 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 actually pretty good. You, uh, I'm like I'm not, like one hundred percent certain you can open race range here. Yeah. From his perspective, you can you can open race one hundred percent range. A screen off. I think we're happy to forbid jam here. Um. Yeah. All right. We please split. Fair. And we're back at. 42 bigs. Oh. A7 suited. Actually, also very tempting to just shove. I mean, we. St I think we st only have starting bounty. Yeah, we didn't win an all in yet. So, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, nobody really has incentive to reshuffle white on us. We don't really cover anyone, but I think it's just where there's already almost 10k in dead money in the middle. Um, yeah, but I, I I was not really. I have analyzed a lot of spots when we cover people and we can go insanely nuts. Um, but here it's always a little bit random. Like people might not be so aware of that actually my bounty isn't so valuable anymore because I have almost two times the starting stack and I only have one starting bounty. So I'm still effectively reshoving 25, 30 bigs. So people should be calling close to a freeze out when I'm reshoving 25 to 30 big blinds. But I think they're over adjusting still and uh, give the bounty too much uh, value. And then they just they start calling something like pocket fours or fives and start gambling with those hands, which would be which which is very detrimental for my EV here. So I just went for the safe call. I think this can never be too bad. Uh, eight seven suited. Uh, easy forward. Eight six suited. Ah. Uh, we're 30, 35 bigs deep. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy already opened Jack Five off earlier. Do you think uh, we should take that in consideration? Try more, playing more po pots in position against a very very wide range with those type of hands. Mm, so I think his open was, of course, only because you were very short and he had all the chips in the world. He still has all the chips in the world, but I don't think he's like adjusting his MP range. He should adjust his MP range as much. An 8-6 suit is usually a fold, so I would also fold here. I think I think there's like no additional benefit. You're not covering the blinds. Yeah. I'm folding here. Yeah, I think in hindsight, I'm also sl slightly leaning more towards fold. But I think when he's able to adjust to my bounty as far as with Jack Five off, I think he will also his opening range will be at least slightly looser when he covers the entire table and he has all the chips in the world. So usually, I would be defending the freeze out. I would be defending eight seven suited for sure. Um, yeah, it's it's close. Like, I th but I think it's too marginal. I think I just just skip it pre flop. <laughs> and we face the flop jam. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's 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 random. Yeah. That's really random. Okay, random this one. Um, yeah, I think we the only thing we can do is jamming here. I guess yep. an open race and a three bet. Yep. Um, I guess his plan was to stack off against Kixi. Do you think, I mean, if we put 9k on top, uh, I think he has to stack it off, yeah. I just, against my, I probably have a few ace-queen combos and then ace-king plus, tens plus. Ah, oh, it's getting close, actually. Let's see. Do you think he can ever fold here? This no. No, 9 so is always a call. If we put the other 9,000 chips on top, what would be his real odds? Like, uh, so 50k, and then he has to call his 36k, so probably around 32, 33. Um, yeah, so we have 35, we have Let's see. round about 38 with the blights and the antis and your stack in. Then we have round about 40 with the open race in, and he has to call. So it's 50 in, and he has to call another um, 25. So he's going around about 2 to 1. Um, and you have start bounty, right? Right. So Yeah. With the bounty so in he, play, he can't fold. He already gets. So, 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 he, so he cl has. Close um, to 2 to 1. 4%. Yeah. yeah 4% additional equity drops, so he needs like 29%. Yeah. Roundabout. So he has to Again, call it off here. Yeah. And we hold. And we we have a very decent stack. This was an interesting spot. Uh, he open shots his, his nine big blinds. Mm -hmm. I think we... I think at least calling. Um, 
I mean, it kind of sucks. It's not a hand where I would like to invite people, but on the other side, I just don't want to jam it in because if we three bet, we have to call it off against, like, I mean, against cut off against small bet anyway. So it's only the big plan we're really afraid of. So why just not jamming in the first place? Um, let's see what was his bounty. Robtinian. He has starting bounty. Uh, Cutoff has. Where is Cutoff? Anton. He has one and a half bounties. Fair start bounty. Small blind has a little bit over start bounty and big blind you're covering, so it's not really important. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think I like call folding here with the force, considering that you have already three start stacks, yeah. and it's also a very valuable stack. Yeah. yeah. And um, you're risking you're you're more or less probably risking the stack to win one bounty, which is not a good deal. So I think I like to call yeah. fold here. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, first bounty in the pocket. Yeah. Ace for off, we're not gonna open. Ace queen off, three and a half x Isaac raising is my standard sizing with this deck size. Ten was off, ten eight, ten eight suited. Uh, we're quite deep. And since he jammed the flop, I'm more incentivized to just to still call very wide because it seems he's a recreational player. So it's a very close defend against another gun range from cutoff, but we're very deep and I think I will be able to make up for a close preflop spot. So I would, would like to see myself calling here. Yeah, I think it's a 100% defend. So I don't think it's like yeah? an increased range. Yeah, I okay. think 10 suited is always in a cutoff defending range. Probably not for probably not for hundred big blinds, but the effect of yeah. stacks behind you, which can overcall a li little bit, so the average is like a little bit lower. So I think if you go for like the fifty six BB defending, yeah, um, I think ten eight suit is always in sight. Um, then something I need to work on because I think uh, as default I would probably mix between calling and folding. Depends on the blinds. Um, so I'm probably defending a few. Percentage is too tight here. Cutoff is under the gun. Um, but as it is with, with preflop ranges, you can't play any spot perfectly fine. Uh, is he jamming effectively? No, he has 110. No, no, he's just yeah, squeezing. squeezing. Um, Easy fold. Yeah. I, I, do you think it makes any difference with this player, no. with the recreational player? No. No, the plan is to call yeah. fold against the squeeze, and I don't, especially not versus big blind squeezes, which is I would just want to say always like insanely strong, even on the even on the higher stacks. Yeah. I mean, those big blind squeezes are like insanely strong. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Oh, a bit too easy. Did wow, he, he's not even covering. Did he? Did he? Did he just? Did he just call off the all in on a flop with Ace King? Yeah. Wow. And he doesn't even okay. cover him. No. That's interesting. Okay, without a spade. Yeah. Ace, deuce, and clubs. Now this is an interesting spot now, because the yeah. big blind is very I, shallow. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's definitely that's definitely not good. It's at least a call. I mean, the big blind is very short. But this is yeah, the yes, he, he has an insane bounty, right? One thousand one hundred fifty-six. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like the that's bounty chip leader. That happens when you multi-table. So Yes. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't. We wouldn't have one. So that's yeah, fair. exactly. Right. King Queen. Off. Now, now we get a bounty. Correct. Exactly. I've, I've foreseen this. Uh. Ah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> next, next, next try. Oh, he's gone. Ah, unfortunate. <laughs> Ten eight off. Easy fold. Sixes. 
on King 10 4. Yep. <clears throat> I would prefer just betting small. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Getting the call. Actually, a good turn for us, for our range. I would certainly continue barreling deuces and threes with 100% frequency. Um, not sure about these middling pocket pairs, sixes to nines. Um, I mean, very natural, like queen x, jack x, flush draws. But I think we want to have some pure bluffs, uh, especially when a queen or jack gets there or nine. Um, I mean, nine has a straight anyway with queen jack, so it doesn't really make any difference. Um, so it's the question is now how far, how wide do we want to bluff? Because he doesn't really have so many ace jacks, he doesn't really have so many ace queens. Um, he has some ace tens, ace fours, but that's pretty much it. So I think his range is very heavily capped towards king x ten x. I, I, I personally love playing this spot very aggressively. Um, would definitely love to have a spade where we can just then go bananas on any spade on the river. Where would you draw the threshold? What would be your um, no brainer that's, bluffs? That's that's a very good question since you have. Of course, a very wide button range here, and um, on this kind of structure, the big blind should check raise a decent amount of his draws. So even the straight is so so the ace on a turn. He doesn't even have many straights, right? So um, and he doesn't have much ace x because most of the ace x has to fold on this kind of structure on the flop. And yeah, now, maybe ace five clubs, ace two clubs. Yeah, of course he has some ace x, yeah. but it's not it's, like it's very limited. Right. Yeah. So um, on the turn, your whole range gets a very big equity shift, at least perceived. So I would just that big. Also with, with sixes. My, I think I think I think I'm I think I'm over bluffing here, like insane. Just just bet again, like yeah. everything, which is not like a ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't. Of, of course, this is not like game theoretical optimal, but I think, yeah, since the turn is so great, um, I think I can't, it's, it's can't stop myself from like over bluffing the spot. Yeah, I think this is one of the spots where slightly over bluffing is better than under, because as you said, he doesn't have all the queen jacks that he's, uh, because he's check raising them most of the time on the flop. Um, he should probably also, if he has ace jack, check raise some of them. I'm not sure, especially with the spade. Um, no, I don't think so. Don't you that's, think so? That, that's that's good shot on value. Don't think you should check raise this. Okay. Anyway, so even if he has ace jack ace queen, he's probably three betting at preflop. Um, yeah, it's yeah, not it's many just, comments. So I think it's a good card to second barrel. So we have the king queen suited here. I think call it pretty standard against under the gun. Uh, we face the squeeze. He was playing very very tight so far. Uh, very solid and straightforward. I expect it to be very value heavy. We don't cover him. Um, probably defend, but I just don't see him ever having those king 10 suited or jack 10 suited bluffs once in a while. Or this linear squeezing range with like 9s and 10s that I'm also really benefiting from. So it's one of the spots where I just say, well, may if he's bluffing well, then here, take my chips. But I think against the average player, uh, I really like my fold here. Just see myself being too dominated too often in these positions. And yeah, wasting my stack too often. Even though the hand looks beautiful. Okay. I would have three bet by the way, preflop versus piggy. Yeah. And yeah. just call him. Yeah, that's that's also fine, yeah. How do you like the fold against the squeeze? I think this is totally reasonable. Yeah. Given your reads, if you if you say this is a tie play, which it plays straightforward, then he's three betting that probably like jacks plus ace king. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Probably ace queen a little bit. So yeah, you're you're suffering against yeah. this range and you're playing out of position. So yeah. yeah All right. It's fine, I, think. I think that's a great hand to wrap it up. That also illustrates that playing tight, playing straightforward, making good folds is also very important to poker. Not always chase bounties. Not always playing aggressively. And yeah, thanks for your time. So I think a good video for how to approach mid-game in, in bounty tournaments and then we slowly approach um, the later stage, hopefully soon the final table. Thanks for your time and then see you guys in the next video.
aus Vigray, is it Vigray, right? And Pensy for Razor Edge. Ciao, guys. Ciao.